Welcome back everybody to pray at the nationwide prayer campaign to end abortion forever. Today we have a, a healing retreat for life, uh, Brother Bob Canton, and we have a special guest that he'll be announcing a little later. So let's get going with the prayers. God bless you all. Thank you, everybody, for joining us yet again another time um, to continue the work of ending abortion through our prayers to the Eternal Father. Today we have uh, the gifted uh, healer. He's a preacher. He's a teacher, author, and um, he conducts um, prayer services, and he's graced our live stream many times before, and it's Brother Bob Canton, and he has... Uh, a wonderful testimony of his daughter um, who's here with us today but he will first give a teaching before the testimony and and then after that we will have healing hi brother Bob hello Karen how are you doing great it's uh, nice to be back again and uh, I'm excited to uh, share some teachings here um, oh, this yeah. afternoon on on how to activate signs and wonders and miracles in our lives. That'll be great. Okay, so we'll get you started. Thank yes, you. and uh, yes, and uh, I'd like to read uh, the passage on the book of Philippians, chapter four, verses six to nine. Have no anxiety but in every prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known to God and may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. For the rest, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever honorable, whatever just, Whatever holy, wherever lovable, whatever of good repute, if there be any virtue, if anything worthy of praise, think upon these things, the word of God. And so I'd like to share that with you and also, uh, you know, in many places where I've been conducting healing crusades um, all over the world, many people have asked me and they said, how can we do the works of Jesus in a very effective way? How can we activate, um, activate signs and wonders and miracles in our lives? I said, well, I have a teaching on that. And so I'd like to share this teaching with you. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 2, verse uh, 4, St. Paul says, God added his testimony by signs, wonders, various acts of power, and distribution of the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. Now, what is the meaning of miracle? The word miracle comes from the Greek word, it's a Greek word, dunamis, meaning mighty deeds or supernatural power. Miracle is defined as an event that violates the so-called laws of nature. It uh, is described as a supernatural act that is beyond human possibilities. Miracle is also used to describe extraordinary healing. As we read in the book of Acts chapter 19, verse 11, a miracle causes great amazement. And as we read in the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 13, a miracle is a spiritual gift 
In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 28 to 31, St. Paul says that we should desire the higher gifts, such as prophecy and miracles and other gifts. So if you want to be a miracle worker, you have to ask God for that. In my case, I asked God, I said, Lord, give me not only one gift because each one of us is endowed with at least one gift from the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, give me all the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that I can be an effective worker in your kingdom, in your vineyard. So I did not only ask for one. I know I have at least one gift. Everybody had, everybody has at least one gift from the Lord. But I said, i like to have all, Lord. No, I'm not asking him so that I, I would be considered as better than anybody else. No, I, I was asking him so that I will be fully equipped to do his works because my desire is to evangelize, to bring souls to the Lord's kingdom. That's my desire. I said, Lord, this is not for me, but this is for your people so that I can be an instrument, instrument of your healing power. I can be an instrument, an effective instrument of your healing grace, of your miraculous touch. I said, Lord, do unto me as you will. I am not worthy, Lord, but because of your death on the cross in Calvary, you made me worthy. So um, St. Paul says uh, we should desire higher gifts, such as prophecy and miracles and other gifts. So that's what I did. Uh, one day I asked the Lord, give me all the gifts, Lord. And I believe the Lord has, has answered or has granted my prayers. Now, let's continue on. What is the meaning of the word sign or signs? Sign in the Greek word is semion. It spells S as in Sam, E, M as in Mary, E, I, O, N, semion. It is defined as a mark or token or sign that by which a person or a thing is distinguished from others and is known. The word signs is used 81 times in the New Testament. Simeon is usually used to describe a miraculous event, but specifically when there is an emphasis on something else, secondary to the miracles performed. Now, I'll give you an example of this. When uh, Jesus multiplied the food to feed 5,000 people, these actions show that he had power and ability to create something out of nothing. It also showed that he was compassionate for the people's needs and that he could provide for them without natural means. Now, what is the meaning of the word wonders? Wonders are described as marvels. This word is designed to describe miraculous acts of God. And um, the Greek word for wonders is teras. T as in tam, E-R-A-S, teras. Every occurrence of wonders is used with the word signs. The word is used 24 times in the New Testament. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 19, wonders take place, we read, it says, wonders take place in heaven and signs take place on earth. In the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 3, we read, the Lord grants signs and wonders to be done throughout through, through the people's hands. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 11, Jesus says, Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, 
or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. So the Lord is saying, if you don't, if you don't believe in me, look at the, the things that I did. Look at the things that occurred, like miracles, signs, and wonders. Miracles, signs, and wonders should follow Christians, not the other way around. In other words, my brothers and sisters, I have noticed that many Christians, when they hear that somebody is doing miraculous things or, or wonderful things, they go in droves. I mean, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, signs and wonders and miracles and healings should follow wherever the Christians are, wherever you are. If you believe in Jesus, Jesus says, signs like this will follow those who believe, who believe in my name. They shall be able to cast out demons. They shall be able to drink uh, deadly poison. They shall be able to handle snakes. And the sick upon whom they, they pray who shall recover. So wherever we are, wherever the Christians are, signs and wonders and healings should follow them. But sad to say, that's not true for most Christians. You know, I, and I think one of the reasons for that is that they don't believe. They don't believe that, that the Lord can and will use them. They don't believe that healings, miracles, signs, and wonders will follow them. No, Jesus says that it should follow us Christians. So whether you are in, you, you are in the grocery store or you are in the place of work or, or whether you are um, in the mall, wherever you are, healings and signs and wonders should follow you. And um, all we have to do is to have faith. All we have to do is to have the boldness to do it. If we see somebody who is sick, or if we see somebody who is who needs the prayers, you know, we should say we should offer to pray for them, and let the the Lord do the rest. That's what I do. I pray for the sick. I pray for healing, but I leave the results to the Lord. So, I would always say, Lord, back me up, because I cannot do this without you, Lord. I am nothing. And then, Lord, you are everything. You can do anything. So, and then we have to be bold. That's why, you know, those are, these are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. He said, signs and wonders and healing should follow Christians, should follow those who believe. Now, uh, sisters and brothers, this is, that's, that's what Jesus says in the book of John chapter 14. Verses 12 to 14, that, that signs and wonders should follow us. As I said, I did not make this up. These are the words, exactly the words of Jesus. And he said, Amen. You know, before he said these words, he said, Amen, Amen. He said, Amen twice. So in other words, the Lord was saying, Hey, listen to me. You know, he was like saying, Hey, this is really, really important. And he said, Amen, Amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. And whatever you, uh, you, you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. So we have to ask the Lord. We have to ask him. And because, and, and because of the, our baptism and confirmation, we are, we are the followers of Christ. And that power that raised Jesus from the dead should be upon us. We receive his power. The same power that raised him from the dead is upon us. And every time I read the words, I read these words, Jesus says, in my name, I will do it. Because you know why? The name of Jesus is power. And through because of the virtue of our baptism and confirmation, we have that power. We have that power to raise, even to raise someone from the dead. We have that power. 
And I remember one day, one time, this lady, I think I have shared this before, but I like to repeat this. One time, this this lady from uh, Wisconsin called me and, and she said, Bob, I have my daughter here. My uh, daughter is pregnant, four months pregnant. And the baby and the, the fetus in her womb had died. The, the, the doctor told her, uh, uh, you know, that after a uh, sonogram, X-ray and all of that, and we determined that the fetus in her womb had died. So we have to, to, ex to expose, to take away the dead fetus from the womb. So she said, can you pray? Can you pray for my daughter? That uh, She said, tomorrow, and that was sometime in October, uh, I, I believe um, like 2000, somewhere 2016 or 2017, somewhere around the time. And she said, Bob, can you pray for my daughter that um, during this uh, procedure that she would not be harmed because they have to to expulse the dead fetus from her womb. So I prayed with her. I said, sure. I, at first I said, Lord, please protect this lady when this procedure will be performed tomorrow. So, and then the Lord spoke into my heart and he said, my son, speak life into the baby. Speak life in my name. So I said, in Jesus' name, I speak life into the baby. So I said it three times. To, in honor of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So after the prayers, I said, okay, so let me know what happens, you know. She said, yeah, Bob, tomorrow she's going to the hospital and we'll have to have this procedure. You know, I said, okay, so let me know. So I never heard from them again. That was October in 2016 or 17. And then I received a call like around March the following year. And she said, Bob, you remember me? I said, who are you? She said, I, I called you to pray for my daughter um, because uh, the baby in the womb had expired and uh, uh, there she is. So her daughter talked to me, she says, Bob, you know what happened? She said, during the um, procedure uh, or before the procedure to expose the baby from my womb, uh, they performed another sonogram, X-ray, and all of that, and they detected heartbeats in the baby. And she said, Bob, you know what? She said, yesterday, I delivered a healthy baby girl, eight-pound baby girl. And her second name is Milagros, meaning miracles, because that's what she is. She's a miracle. So now I can claim, Karen, that in spite of myself, the Lord used me to raise somebody from the dead. Amen? I can claim that. Because, not, not because of me, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The power of the name of Jesus. So, so miracles are always for the glory of God. There is a right, you know, a relationship between Jesus, whole life, and the glory of God. When, when he walked among us, we beheld the glory of God. So I have here the ways on how to activate signs and wonders and miracles in your lives. And, and number one on my list, this is not necessarily in a, accordance to the importance, but as I wrote it down, as it came to me, okay? So... I, this is not uh, exclusive. This is inclusive, you know. Of course, there are many ways, but uh, I, I put in like six or seven ways. And um, okay, so number one on my list is have Jesus at the center of our life. In order for us to be able to be used to perform signs and wonders and miracles in our lives, we have to have Jesus at the center of our lives. We have to have... A
Now, take note of these words that I'm giving you. We have to have a right personal relationship with the Lord. Now, sad to say, some people will say they only go to the Lord when they need something. They would say, Lord, please give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. You know, that's not, <laughs> that's not the right relationship. You know, right relationship with the Lord is that he is your friend. You can talk to him anywhere you are, anytime you are, any time of the day. You, he is in you, in your heart. You have this uh, subconscious or a conscious awareness that he is with you, that he's present in you and walking with you. No, not, not only at the time when we, there's a need in our lives that we go to Jesus. No, it should be all the time. We should have uh, uh, the right relationship, a right relationship, personal relationship is, is like he's a friend. He's your best friend because he is actually your best friend. He is your, your daddy. So we have to have a conscious and, and um, subconscious awareness of his presence in us. Talk to him. Ask him to guide you every day. Thank him for your life. Thank him for all the blessings that you receive from him. So praise him. Praise his name. Continuously praise him. Lord Jesus, I know you are with me. I praise you, Lord, because you are with me and have mercy on me. Guide me to do the right things, to do the things that that please you, Lord. So we have to continuously have him in our heart. You know, we should carry him, so to speak. We should carry him wherever we are. We, we should be ready to, by the way, we should also be ready to give him away to those people who don't know him. So that's the right relationship, personal relationship with the Lord. He's more than your friend. He's more than your parents. He's more than your best friend here on earth. Continuously communicate with the Lord. Okay? So, number two on my list is, is in order to activate signs and wonders and miracles in our lives, we have to step out in faith in order for God's power to be released. Faith can move the heart of God. Example of this is the story of 10 lepers. In the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 12, the word of God says, as Jesus was entering a village, 10 lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go. Show yourselves to the priest. As they were going, they were cleansed. So it was, it was not until these lepers stepped out in faith and obeyed Jesus that they experienced his healing power. Jesus commanded them in, to do something, and boom! <laughs> Jesus says, go show your yourselves to the priest, and, and as uh, he commanded them, and he followed his command, and boom, it happened. That's the way faith works. Faith is trusting and obeying God, even if you, if you don't have any visible physical evidence supporting your action or decision. So one time, I conducted... Um, Life in the Spirit Seminar in Ontario, California, in, in Southern California. Uh, in, you know, Ontario is uh, uh, not far away from San Bernardino, county not far away from San Diego. So uh, there were 100 and at least 150 people in the hall, church hall. So I, I conducted the Life in the Spirit Seminar the whole day. And... Um, during during the uh, break time, during the, the break time, 
you know, um, I was talking to some people there. And then after we, after lunch, you know, there was the lunch, lunch break. After lunch, we, we gathered again. And then we sang some songs, uh, gathering songs, praise songs. And then the Lord spoke into my heart. He said, my son, I want you to breathe, breathe on my people. I said, Lord, breath, breath on your people? She says, yeah, breath on them, my son. So I thought that. I said, how could this be? There are at least 150 people there. I said, do I have to go to each person and breathe on them? You know, I was, I was wondering. I said, how could that be? And, you know, I said, no, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's not from God. So I even say, I rebuke you. I rebuke you. Get, go away from me. But then this strong voice in my heart saying, my son, I want you to breathe on them. So as I was, uh, you know, leading, uh, well, I said, okay, let's go on with the teaching. And then the Lord keep on um, whispering into my heart or speaking into my heart. I want you, my son, to, to breathe on them. And then I said, okay, this must be from God because it keeps on coming back to me. Even though I already rebuked it, I said, in, in Jesus' name, leave me. But the voice kept on speaking into my heart. I said, this must be from the Lord. So I said, Lord, how can I do this? He says, my son, use the microphone, you know. So what I did, I said, my brothers and sisters, I said, receive. And then I, I made a resounding, resounding breath on the microphone. And you know what happened, Karen? Everybody, everybody went down on the floor together with their chairs. And they were, many of them were speaking in tongues for the first time. Many of them were crying. Many of them were praising the Lord. It was power. You know, I said, wow, this is power. So, about 15 minutes later, 12 or 15 minutes later, they all stood up and they ran to me towards where I was in the front. And I have three companions with me. I have my brother Nilo and the music minister. His name is Emmanuel. And the member of the prayer group, his name is John De Gregory. They were forming like a line. And they were holding their hands and, and trying to protect me from the crowd. But they were running towards me. I said, don't worry, don't worry. They just want me to touch them and pray over them. That was power right there. So what Praise I did, I just obeyed. You yes, I just obeyed. Word. Yes, and I just obeyed what the Lord was telling me. You know, I, it looks or it sounds ridiculous. But the thing is, somebody says, in order to experience the miraculous, you have to be willing to do the ridiculous. If the Lord tells you to do it, even though it sounds ridiculous, do it by all means, because the Lord is not your power, but it is the power of God. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. What a, what a power. So, you know, so faith doesn't need any evidence. It simply needs our, our saying yes Yes to God. We have to obey God. Faith is walking on the word of God. Faith opens the door and gives God permission to respond to the cry of our heart. Okay? So, um, so we have to, uh, to follow. Like, like one time also, I was in, in Brazil, in Teresina, Brazil. There were 8,000 people there in attendance of the healing crusade. In front of me, there were the, the, the blind people, people in the wheelchair, you know, those um, uh, in, in, in front of me. And then the, the stage was somewhat elevated, okay? And um, so anyway, I, I, I said, I have a prompting here to play, to pray over the blind people. And so... Um, I said, raise your hands, those, those of you who are blind. You know, so they're in front of me, you know, and um, I have to even, 
uh, lay down on my stomach in order to touch them. That's how the <laughs> the stage was, uh, the, how high the elevation was. I have to to lie down on my stomach to, in order to touch them, to pray over them. And then there was this this young man, and um, I said, now be healed. I command your eyes to open up, to open up, to open up. I was praying. And then this man said, I can see, I can see, I can see. I said, really? Really? She said, yeah. And and she said, I've been blind for, for I know, she, he was 18 years old. She says, I've been blind since birth. I've been blind since birth. And so we, we prayed over him. And um, I prayed over him. It's a rebuke blindness commanded to, to leave him. And he was shouting, I can see, I can see. I said, can you, well, if you see me, says, follow what I do. So I, 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 make, um, I, I make movements in my hands, with, with my hands, and he followed everything. And he was crying like a baby. And there was another lady there who was blind because of glaucoma. She was able to see also. And then people in the wheelchair started walking and running around in, inside. It, it was an open air auditorium, 8,000 8, people, 8,000 people there. And it was amazing. Signs and wonders and healings followed. And wow, I said, Lord, this is you present here among your people. So... <laughs> So we have to obey. We have to obey and, and we should step out in faith. You know, we should step out in faith. Some some people say, well, you know, I don't know. Some people, when they pray over people, they said, well, if they get healed, okay. If not, it's okay also. No, no, you have to have faith. You have to have a determination that it's not you doing it. It's the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. So... You know, so I have seen hundreds of those people in the wheelchair. Uh, people were blind, deaf people. You know, if they were, they received their miraculous healings. You know, uh, people who could not walk for years, they were able to he to to walk. Blind people. You know, there was a lady in there was a lady in uh, McMinnville, Oregon. She had been blind. For 45 years, you know, so we she, she, she's in her late 70s or early 80s. We prayed over her and she could not, she could not get over it. I can see you. I can see your eyes. I can see your nose. I can see your mouth. I can see uh, what you're wearing. And she could, uh, she was crying and she says, I can see everything. I said, really? Yes. I, 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 uh, he says, I. I can see your, your tie, your corbata. She said, corbata. She was a Hispanic lady. And the, it brought the house down there. 40, can you imagine 45 years being blind, she was able to see. So not only me, I, I, every believer, every believer, every Christian should be able to do that. Now, I'm not exaggerating. You know, uh, you might say, oh, because Bob... Uh, you are a special person. No. Of course, you know, everybody in the eyes of the Lord, everybody is special. Everybody is being loved by the Lord. But as I said, if you want to, to do the miraculous, you have to be willing to do the ridiculous. I said, Lord, use me. That do not, you know, ask the Lord. Lord, use me. Use me, Lord, in spite of myself. So that Many people will will uh, come to you. Many people will will come into your kingdom. Many people will repent. And you know, I heard people crying when they saw all of these miracles taking place, and they were asking the Lord for forgiveness. Oh Lord, forgive us of all our sins. You have seen this miracle, Lord. You are here, Lord. You are present among us. Have mercy on me, Lord. You know. So then, when I hear that, I said, Let us. Now pray the uh, the acts of of um, repentance. You know, I have prayer for that. So I led him to repentance. You know, and and I said, come to Jesus. He cares for you. He loves you. He died for you on the cross in Calvary, and He's the way, the truth, and the life. 
Praise God. Yes. Did you experience uh, people who were atheists come into conversion? Yes. Many in the, many in, in uh, non-Christian countries, like Muslim countries in Indonesia. Indonesia is a Muslim country, and Malaysia, and Thailand. And w we have people, you know, uh, went uh, being converted into Christianity because they have seen signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. First time I went to, to Indonesia in Jakarta, we have healing crusades there uh, in many various places there in Jakarta and uh, uh, all around Indonesia. And then um, when I went back there, like two years later, I was told, Bob, she said, the, um, the Islam community has given us a warning uh, to make it low key because they found out that many, many uh, Muslim people had become Catholics Be as a result of your, of, of your healing crusades. They have seen, they're, they're saying, God is alive in the Catholic Church because they have seen people um, being healed, like the blind able to see, the deaf able to hear, um, uh, lame walking, and there were so many deliverance. Uh, people were oppressed by evil spirits. So many deliverances. They have seen that in their very own eyes. So they believe, they came to believe. Many, many conversions, and, and also in in Thailand and also in Malaysia, you know, um, people were convicted that yes, Jesus is truly God. He's the powerful God. He's, 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 uh, he loves us. He has the power to heal us. He has the power to forgive our sins. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Conversion take, take place. That's what I'm saying that the healing ministry is one of the most important tools for evangelization because many people have seen the healings, experienced healings, signs and wonders and miracles, and they came to believe and they became believers. That's why the second time I went there, I was wondering no more, no more um, advertisement on the streets. It used to be the first time I went there, so many advertisements, uh, like like uh, banners on on the streets, you know, healing crusade, and I said, "Wow!" Uh, even in Muslim countries, they, they have this. But the second time I went, no more because they were warned by the Islamic uh, community there to make it low key. No more, no more um, advertisement. No more banners, you know. Just say word of mouth. But the thing is. We went to, we conducted healing crusade in the Jakarta Convention Center. It, about 9,000 people capacity. The church, or the, the, the convention center was packed. Yeah, word of mouth, right? Word of mouth. But the thing is, it, it was packed with uh, people and healings again uh, were manifested because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So it is one of the most important tools Healing, healing is one of the most, most important tools for evangelization because people see, you know, that, that, that impossible made possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, so they, they said, how can a blind uh, see? You know, all we, you know, and, and that the deaf mute, many children, deaf mute children were able to speak and see and, and talk and, and hear for the first time. Children. So there's power. So that's why, that's what I'm saying that we it's have like, to. It's uh, they, their, their spiritual life was born. And amen. 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 So, so, so we, life. yeah, yeah. From, from Jakarta, we went to Simarang. We went to, um, to Surabaya. We went to, um, to Bali. In uh, Bali, I was wondering, they were in the airplane. There were people there. Um, I, I, you know, I was, we, I was wondering. There were about, I don't know, three or four of us there uh, who went with me there from the U.S. You know, and and I was wondering why there were people also following us. 
And I was told by the leaders there in Indonesia, this mob, because of the threat from the Islam community, we um, we are not, you know, we have to be careful. So they are there, you know, they are they are there following you, but they are actually security, you know. So we were in Bali, there was security there, and and they were just following us. They did not talk to us. They did not talk to us, but they were just following us, telling instructions to us not to go there, not to go here, you know, not not to venture out there, you know. And um, because of the fact that they don't want to have an international incident, so they don't want that because because the Islam community has given us a warning. You know, it's it's um, for them it's a threat. But the thing is. Jesus is always with us to uh, protect us. And, and the angels were with us. So, <clears throat> okay, so another um, recommendation that I can give in order for signs and wonders and miracles to be activated in our lives is we have to be a man or a woman of prayer. You know, we have to be persistent in our prayer. A prayerful person is a powerful person. If you are a prayerful person, you are a powerful person. Don't give up when you when you don't see results as you pray. In Thessalonians chapter uh, in in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 17, the word of God says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. We have to pray. In other words, pray without stopping. Constantly pray. And you might say, Bob, that's impossible. I said, you know what? Uh, praying is not only mouthing of words. It's not only praying the rosary. Uh, it's not only praying 2,000 Hail Marys. Uh, or, pray, you know, uh, it's not only that. But but it, it it will be great if you can do it. If you can do it. Yeah, I know of a group in Southern California. They are my friends. They are praying uh, 2,000 Hail Marys every first Saturday. You know, and that's great. If you can do that, praise God. Because rosary is a powerful prayer. But um, but if you cannot do it, you know, pray. Uh, St. Paul says pray without ceasing. In other words, you have a conscious and subconscious awareness of um of uh, the Lord's presence, you know, and you have you have this uh, what you call His presence is always with you, and and your your minds, uh, your mind and your heart and your entire being is always focused on the Lord in His presence and power. Praise God! That's subconscious and 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 unconscious awareness of His presence. So, you know, that, as I said, you don't have to, because sometimes people don't have the time to pray 2,000 Hail Marys, of course. But the thing is, you have to have a conscious awareness of his presence in your life. So our mind, our heart, our entire being is always focused on the Lord. Subconsciously or, or consciously. That's what St. Paul was saying. Saying, you know, I pray without ceasing. In the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 9 to 13, Jesus says, And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. What father among you would hand his son a snake? When he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion, when he asks for an egg, if you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So, my brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, prayer is a reservoir of power. And it should be a way of life for us Christians to pray always, to pray always. Even 
even though you are washing dishes, you pray, Lord, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. Those simple words. Lord, I thank you for being with me. You know, Lord, please do not let me break the, this uh, uh, plate. Or Lord, please thank you, Lord, for guiding me, for being with me. You know, simple as that. Simple as that. So in other words, my brothers and sisters, that's, that's prayer. That's prayer. With, you're, you don't have to have, you know, one thing about prayer is that you can do, you can pray in whatever position, position you may be in. You, you, you are walking, you are lying down, you are, uh, maybe you are kneeling down, or you are, you are, uh, you know, in any, any position you are in, it doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to, to uh, go uh, before the Blessed Sacrament. However, if you have the chance to do that, by all means, do it. Pray before the Blessed Sacrament. But nowadays, it's sometimes hard to do it because of the pandemic. Sometimes the church is closed, you know. So you can do pray. You can do praying wherever, whatever, wherever you are. So because, as I said, a man of prayer is a powerful person. So... Yes. So my brothers and sisters, it should be it should be a way of a way of life. Prayer should be a way of life for every believer. So we have, and then number five, we have to spend time at the feet of Jesus. In the book of Revelation, twenty-four elders who represent all the redeemed of all the ages will will bow before the Lamb who is on the throne. Falling at someone's feet is a picture of worship and submission. Mary, our mother Mary, uh, spent time at the feet of Jesus. Um, no, no, it's not Mother Mary. It's, it's Mary. Um, I don't know where, maybe not Mary Magdalene, but another Mary. I think Mary, the... Um, the sister of uh, Martha, okay? Mary uh, spent time at the feet of Jesus when he came to have supper at her house. The woman at Simon's house spent time at the feet of Jesus washing his feet with her tears. This is, this is another Mary, I believe. Yes, it is good to spend time at the feet of Jesus. Now, how, are, how can we do this? Spend time at the feet of Jesus. We have to be a Eucharistic people. Receive his body and blood on a regular basis. Well, as I said, nowadays, because of the pandemic, sometimes it's hard to do that. But you, you can receive his, his body and blood through, through the, your desire. In other words, spiritual communion. Okay? So we have to be Eucharistic people. Receive his body and blood on a regular basis, spend time with him in the Blessed Sacrament. Well, if sometimes church, churches are open in certain hours, maybe you can go make uh, call your parish. Uh, what time is the church open? I'd like to pray before the Blessed Sacrament, you know. So we have to spend time. And also we have to spend time reading his words. Wherever we are, we should have an awareness of his presence within us and with us. I know that these things are not easy to do, but we have to decide to spend, to spend time, quality time, during our walking, hour, our walking hours or waking hours to be at the feet of Jesus in any shape, style, or forms. If we truly want to be a miracle worker in his kingdom, or if we want to be a recipient of his power. We have to spend time with the Lord. Pray to him. Now, also, I recommend that we should have a heart full of thanksgiving to the Lord. A heart full of thanksgiving. In other words, St. Paul says, give thanks to the Lord always and for everything. So in bad times and in good times, we praise the Lord. We have to have time to praise him and uh, thank him. Going back to the book of Luke, 
chapter 17, verses uh, 15 to 19. And one of them, one of those slippers that I mentioned earlier, the, how many lepers were they? Ten lepers, right? And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed. Were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but the foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The key is not merely to feel thankful, not only to, to feel thankful, but to give thanks verbally. To give thanks to the Lord. Only one of the ten lepers did the right thing by coming to Jesus and expressing thanksgiving. There is a mountain of difference between simply feeling gratitude and expressing gratitude. Yeah, you feel gratitude. You are gratitude. You 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 are thanking to the. You you have uh, what you are thanking God, but you have to express it. Express it, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Like every morning, as soon as you wake up, you say, Lord, thank you for the life you give me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for for my uh, perfect mind. Uh, thank you, Lord, for. All the provisions that you give me, all the your presence, your guidance, your power. Thank you for every grace, every blessing that you're giving me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. You know, every morning, without fail, we should give thanks to the Lord. As soon as we wake up, you know, we should always thank the Lord that we are alive. Because whether you like it or not, my brothers and sisters, there are there were people who were alive last night, but this morning, they are very stiff, stiff, and they, have, they are lifeless this morning. But last night, they were laughing last night, maybe. They were partying last night, maybe. But this morning, they are lifeless. So in, in that sense, you know, you, you are alive. I'm sure you are alive. You are all of those who are listening to me, you are alive. So every day you should give thanks to the Lord. Lord, thank you for, for making me wake up today. Thank you, Lord, for all the graces and the blessings. We have to express our gratitude. In the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 18, verse 18, St. Paul says, In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, verse, verse 15, St. Paul says, Through him, let us continually offer God a sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. So we should give thanks to the Lord. We have to be uh, 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 people of, uh, full of thanksgiving to the Lord. It's not only giving thanks to him during Thanksgiving Day. Some people do that. They only give thanks to the Lord on Thanksgiving Day. No, it should be every moment, every day of our lives. We should give thanks to the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even for the bad things that uh, came to me. Just, just if something bad that came to you, just say, praise God anyway. Because we should remember in the book of Romans chapter 8, 28, it says there, the word of God says, he says, everything will work for the good for those who love him and those who are called to his purposes. So even if bad things happen to you, praise God anyway. Because the Lord allowed things to happen to you for a reason, for a reason. Maybe the bad things happen to you so that you become closer to him. So that you realize that Jesus loves you, that he is there to protect you. He is there to be with you. He's there to, to bind up your wounds. So my brothers and sisters, God is good. Amen? Amen? Now I'd like to ask my daughter. Her name is Tricia. Tricia, um, 
she has a psychology um uh I would call the diploma from from UC Irvine in in California she she was work, working as a teacher and um she was about to to um get her master's degree when something terrible I would say terrible happened to her but praise God I would like Trisha to to um give her testimony and I thank God that the Lord is using Trisha in a powerful way Trish Trish Hi everybody my name is Trisha and like my dad said in 2014, when I was 28 years old, I suffered a ruptured brain aneurysm, three subsequent strokes, and a grand mal seizure that nearly killed me. I was in a coma on life support for about a month, and I was only given a 30% chance of surviving. And the doctors told my parents that even if I did survive, I might not be able to think or talk or speak or walk or even breathe on my own but thank god a month later i woke up from the coma but i had severe disability my entire left side was completely paralyzed because they had to do five surgeries and the first one lasted 16 hours and they actually removed the right half of my skull and i had to wear a helmet for five months until my skull was replaced and when it happened i suffered short and long term memory loss for a long time so every time they would tell me what happened it was like i was hearing it again for the first time and I would cry every single time they would tell me what happened because my life just fell apart in an instant. Like my dad said, I was actually working my dream job at a Montessori preschool in Mission Montessori in Mission Viejo in Southern California, and I was completely independent and I had built the life that I dreamed of and everything just fell apart in an instant and I actually was given a scholarship by the director of the preschool to go back to UC Irvine to get my Montessori teaching credentials and I only had 2 weeks left in the program when the aneurysm happened. So my life completely fell apart and all my dreams were crushed in a single instant. and it was so devastating i couldn't believe that this horrible thing could happen to me and it's really only by the grace of god that i have not only survived but i have come leaps and bounds further and far surpassed every single prognosis that the doctors have given me i am talking i have zero develop, developmental disabilities i am completely cognitively aware and i have actually done five official 5k's since this happened and i do 10,000 steps a day now and i bike 10 to 15 miles and actually when this happened i gained a lot of weight because i was confined to a wheelchair and i wasn't able to move so i was over 200 pounds but by the grace of god i've been able to exercise and i'm actually now in better shape than i was before the aneurysm because i've lost 58 pounds and i've even lost 20 of those in quarantine So God has given me grace every single day to still keep on reaching for recovery, still become a better person than I even was before this happened because our redeemer lives, because he gives us beauty for ashes, because 
He restores everything better than what it was before because he is the resurrection and the life. And he says it and it just comes to pass. When he created the world, he just spoke and it happened. So under the power of his word, anything is possible. So every day I declare his promises. I declare his word. I say, after this season of suffering, the Lord in all his grace will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish me. And our light and momentary afflictions are nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. And be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though we have to endure many trials for a little while. And I also declare that those that sow in tears will reap with songs of joy, and those that go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return singing songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. And I tell him, God, you are the vine and I am the branch. So please show me what seeds to sow in this season so I can reap an amazing harvest in the next season because I know that you have a plan for me. I know that your plans are for good. And no matter what comes against me, you can cause it all to work together for the good. And I believe you because of who you are, because your word says so. And if you say so, it has to come to pass and nothing, no weapon formed against me can prosper because you are greater than anything that tries to harm me. And I believe it. And even though I'm still fighting, even though I'm still in the season of suffering, I have faith that God is who he is and he will come through for me. And he is faithful to do everything what he says. And he is faithful to finish every work that he has started in me. I believe it, even though I have yet to see it. I believe it, and I'm claiming it today, and I am asking everybody to join me in believing all of his promises that they will come to pass, and we will see them in our lives. Even in this difficult season of COVID, nothing, no weapon formed against us can prosper, and he will use everything that has come against us for his greater glory, honor, and praise. I believe it. In Jesus' name. Signs yes, and, and wonders. And, and, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Tricia, by the way, Karen, she had participated in five marathons. And the first marathon that she had participated was in 2016, Press? Yes. 2016 at, uh, at the uh, Disney Disney 5K Marathon, and she finished that marathon, and also like four other marathons, you know. It was amazing, and through through her determination, through her um, uh, courage, and through her, uh, to the grace that the Lord has given her, she had all these accomplishments. She had medals and all of that, and five medals, you know, and, and also... Uh, by the way, Karen, we spent about six months, almost six months. Uh, we stayed, my wife and I stayed in the hotel in, um, in uh, Irvine and um, six months. And you don't want to get our, our bills for the hotel, but we didn't mind it because, you know, God provides. God provides. And we, we felt the hands of God uh, for Tricia. And we know that many people... I, I would say in many people, practically all over the world, had been praying for Tricia. It's so amazing. I, I have some mis I have emails from all over the place, you know, saying, How's your daughter Tricia? And when I go to other countries, some people even ask me, How's your daughter doing? You know, even after this happened to her, some people still remember Tricia. I think she's more popular than me. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Brother Bob. I have to tell yeah. you, I have to tell you that um, I prayed for Trisha and I didn't even know who she was because it was like a prayer chain that was going around all over the United States. So nice to meet you, Trisha. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so, so much for praying for me. I am living, breathing, walking, talking proof that God heard your prayers and he answered it. 
So thank Trisha, you. Trisha, you are a miracle. You made me cry. Thank you so much. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Surely, so, God has a great mission for you. Surely. Surely. You and you know what? I uh, believe it because in Revelation it says, the enemy is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. Jesus already did it. He did the finished work and he gives us all a testimony to share with everybody else so that they can come to Christ and know that he is Lord and the enemy will be defeated. Yes. And, and by the way, Karen, Tricia, Tricia has been praying for, for people. Some, some people ask Tricia for prayers and some people who came to the house, they don't leave uh, without Trisha praying over them. <laughs> it's amazing, you know, how the Lord can turn the it's darkness amazing. into light. Truly amazing grace. How great thou art. So that yes. is a thank you for sharing. This is so incredible. What a beautiful surprise. Thank you, Brother Bob. And thank you, Trisha. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Please come again. I will. <laughs> okay, so we will pray for healing now. And uh, Trish, if you have some uh, word of knowledge or whatever, uh, just speak out, okay? That, that's okay, Karen, right? More than okay. Okay, so let us uh, start praying right now, okay? In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. And um, Lord, we live up to you, those people who are sick, especially those who have who have brain disorders, Lord, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, Lord, brain cancer, Lord, heal them. Let your precious blood, Lord, touch them and heal them in Jesus' name. Those who have mental disorders, those who have depression, anxieties, uh, panic attack, Lord, heal them right now in Jesus' name by the power of the name and the blood of Jesus. Those who have Parkinson's disease, stroke, and uh, trans transient disorders, ischemic attack, Lord, those who have Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, chronic memory loss, Lord, cover them with your precious blood, heal them, give them brand new brain. We speak healing into the cerebellum, into the brainstem, into the lobes and brain brainstem, and, and, and also the, the limbic system in Jesus' name. All the all the muscles in the brain, all the tissues in the brain to be to be healed in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, soak, soak uh, your children's brain with your most precious blood, the same blood that you shed on the cross in Calvary. Lord, we, we also uh, live up to you, those who have, uh, those who are deaf, deaf people in Jesus' name. We command the ears to open up in the mighty name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Tinnitus, ringing in the air, be gone, in Jesus' name. Deafness, be gone. Um, infections in the air, be gone, in Jesus' name. Balance disorders, be gone, in Jesus' name. Hambaria, si kalaramba, handi si andio. Lord, those, those, who have, um, those who have balanced these disorders to be healed, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for healing your people, Lord. And Lord, we live up to you, all those people who are blind. Lord, open their eyes by the power of your name, by the power of your blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We speak healing to the cornea. We speak healing into the pupils. We speak healing into the iris. We speak healing into the eyes. In Jesus' name, we, mac macular degeneration to be gone completely with the, by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, melt all the cataracts in the eyes of your people in Jesus' name. You foul spirit of glaucoma be gone and the pressure in the eyes of your people be lowered down to normal in Jesus' name. Diabetic retin retinopathy be, be gone, be healed in Jesus' name. All nearsightedness and farsightedness, Lord, dizzy eyes to be healed, color blindness, to be gone completely in Jesus' name, floaters, floaters to be to disappear in Jesus' name, dry eyes to be healed by the power of the name and the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Lord, those who have nose uh, problems, Lord, uh, the bleeding in the nose, in Jesus' name, nose bleed, to be healed completely, Lord, and all the smell and taste disorders, those who could not smell and taste, Lord, um, we ask you to, to heal them, that you'll be able to smell uh, the aroma around them and taste the food that they are eating, Lord, in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Sinusitis to be gone completely in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. All uh, nasal polyps to disappear in Jesus' name. Lord, that's their mouth, the mouth of your people, Lord. That's their mouths by the power of your name, by the power of your blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit. You found spirit of oral cancer to be gone, to be destroyed by the B cells and the T cells and the NK cells in Jesus' name, TMJ in Jesus' name, to be healed. And we command the jaw to have a perfect, perfect uh, uh, balance in Jesus' name. I command the chemical, electrical, physical frequencies in their mouths and their bodies to be in balance and their and harmony in Jesus' name. We take authority over periodontitis, gingivitis, cavities be gone in Jesus' name by the power of the name and the blood of Jesus. Lord, that's their throat. Lord, the throat of your people, Lord, in his sore throat to be healed, in infections to be gone, salivary gland diseases to be healed completely, strep throat to be to disappear, uh, laryngeal cancer, we rebuke you, we command you to be gone, to be healed completely in, in Jesus' name, swallowing disorders to, to stop and to be healed completely in Jesus' name, tonsillitis to be gone completely in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's also our 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 uh, all our bones, Lord, in Jesus' name. That's our, our lower extremities, Lord. That's our heart in Jesus' name. Congenital heart disease, congenital heart disease, be gone in Jesus' name. Arrhythmia, coronary artery diseases, to be gone in Jesus' name. Lord, cleanse all the arteries of your people. Uh, cleanse the plaques. Melt out the plaques in around the arteries of your people's heart. That this artery, this the the plaques would cause heart attacks. Lord, uh, cleanse out all the plaques in their arteries in Jesus' name. Myocardial infarction or heart attack be gone. Heart failure to disappear. Lord, that's the hearts of your people, so they will be functioning normally. Marcha, mitral valve prolapse, prolapse to the disappear, to be healed completely. Pulmonary stin, stenosis, to be healed. Valve, valve stenosis, atrial fibrillation, to be normal in Jesus' name. The, the heart beats to be normal in Jesus' name by the power of the name and the blood of Jesus. Lord, that's the lungs of your people. Lord, you created the lungs of your people with love. Lord, uh, in Jesus' name, I take authority over asthma and allergy. Chronic asthma and allergy be gone in Jesus' name. COPD to disappear completely. Chronic bronchitis to be gone. Empyzema, lung cancer to disappear. I bombard by faith the lungs of your people with your precious blood to cleanse out lung cancer, cancerous cells in the lungs. Cystic fibrosis to disappear. Pneumonia in Jesus' name to disappear completely by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, plural effusion to disappear and to be healed in Jesus' name. Hakalaramba siandara, handi siandi, O Lord, farther down, Lord, that's your people's liver, uh, the, the cancer of the liver to disappear with the precious blood, with your precious blood, Lord, with the power of the, of the Holy Spirit that the NK cells and the T cells and the B cells will destroy the cancerous cells in the liver. Lord, cirrhosis of the liver, be healed in Jesus' name. Hepatitis be gone. Fatty liver disease, in Jesus' name, to be healed completely in Jesus' name. High enzymes in the liver to uh, go down to normal in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. Lord, your words, spirit, your words are spirit and they are life. Lord, we apply your precious words on your people, Lord. 
the people that the words you said uh, on book of Psalm 107, you said, Lord, that you heal our diseases and you forgive our sins. Lord, touch your people's pancreas. Lord, uh, acute pancreatitis to be gone, to be healed. A pancreatic cancer to be bombarded out with your precious blood. Lord, uh, make the uh, liver, the pancreas of your people to be healthy, to be healthy and to be functioning normally in Jesus' name. Chronic uh, pancreatitis to disappear in Jesus' name. Come, Father, come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, that's also your people's colon, the digestive system for relictal cancer to disappear completely in Jesus' name. Colonic polyps to be gone, to be gone by the blood of Jesus. Ulcerative colitis to disappear. Diverticulitis to disappear. Irritable bowel syndrome to be gone in Jesus' name. Hemorrhoids to be melted away in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, touch your people's skin, any uh, acne or, or eczema, oh Lord, be healed in Jesus' name. Skin cancer, blisters and bruises and candidiasis to disappear and to be healed completely in Jesus' name. Lord, take away the warts and the blemishes uh, from your people's skin in Jesus' name. And Lord, touch also the bladder of your, of your people, Lord. The, the cystitis to disappear, urinary incontinence to be gone and to be healed, overactive bladder to be healed completely in Jesus' name, bladder cancer to be targeted by the blood of Jesus and to disappear and to be healed completely in Jesus' name. Lord, touch your people's kidneys, O oh Lord. You created our kidneys with love. Lord, we are, you, you created us with love, Lord. You created us delicately. And in Jesus' name, the abdominal uh, compartment syndrome began in Jesus' name. Acute kidney failure to disappear. I bombard by faith with your precious blood all the kidneys of your people in Jesus' name. Acute kidney injuries to be healed in Jesus' name. Acute lobar nephronia to be healed completely in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amyloidosis to be healed completely. And Lord, also install the divine insulin, divine insulin for those who are who have diabetes, Lord. That the divine insulin will in in their in their uh, pancreas to be operative every second of their lives. In Jesus' name, to regulate the sugar in the blood of those diabetic people. In Jesus' name. By faith, we speak of creative miracle for divine insulin into their bodies. In Jesus' name. Come, Father, come, Jesus, come, Holy Spirit. And Lord, those who are suffering from uh, any type of cancer, be gone, all the, all the cancer cells, be gone, multiple myeloma to be healed. We apply by faith your blood into the bones of your people, into the organs of your people, in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. Cleanse the multiple myeloma from the bodies of your people, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Uterine cancer begun. Endometriosis to disappear completely, in Jesus' name. Um, all the uh, uh, cancerous uh, cells in the uterus to disappear. In Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Prostate cancer, in Jesus' name, to be gone. Lord, melt away the, the uh, prostate cancer in your, in your son's body, in Jesus' name. Enlarged prostate, to be gone, in Jesus' name. Prostate cancer, to disappear, in Jesus' name. Male infertility, to be gone, in Jesus' name. All sicknesses in the lower extremities in the arms, arthritis began in the fingers, in the hands of your people, Lord, and touch the, your, your people's legs and feet, oh Lord, that touch them, uh, let all the abnormal growth in the legs to disappear, all the abnormal growth in the bodies to be melted away in Jesus' name. Halarashi, Kalaramba, Handishi, Andio, 
yung power spirit of God to be gone high high um, um, uh, illnesses high uh, and also the um, uh, chronic arthritis in the legs in the feet to be gone in Jesus name God to disappear in Jesus name come father come Jesus come Holy Spirit Hambaria si kalaramba Lord touch our bodies from the top of our head to the soles of our feet Lord cleanse them with your precious blood come father come Jesus come Holy Spirit in Jesus name thank you Lord for for healing your people thank you for what you are doing right now Thank you for what you're going to do for the healing of your people. In Jesus' name, come Father, come Jesus, come Holy Spirit. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. Thank you for what you're going to do for your people, for the healing of your people. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. And I sense that um, somebody is being healed of, um, of uh, depression. You know, somebody... Huh? Yeah, healing of this de depression and anxieties. Thank you, Lord. Somebody is being healed of that. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I I have a a, a vision of of um, arteries in the heart that are clogged with um, clogged with uh, plaques, and that cause that would cause um, heart attacks. You know, somebody here, without you being aware of this, uh, you have plaques around your arteries, plaque arteries, and I have I have the vision of the Lord um, cleansing your arteries from all those plaques. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If someone here uh, uh, is experiencing like maybe chest pain off and on, that person may be the one or per persons. Um, Maybe you have those plaques around your arteries and the Lord is cleansing those plaques out right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Hosanna to your Lord. And also um, irritable, somebody has irritable bowel syndrome. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, that, that is gone already in Jesus' name. And, and, and that, those people, chances are, those people who have irritable bowel syndrome, uh, it's caused by anxiety also. It's caused by unforgiveness. You know, it's, it's, it's caused by um, unforgiveness and also hatred and also, un, un, and also bitterness. You know, the Lord is giving you peace for you to be able to forgive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And, and also somebody has a, Balance disorder, you know, um, uh, you, you feel dizzy and because of your infection in the ear uh, and, Jesus, and you are being healed by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Hosanna to your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And also, um, somebody has uh, smell and taste disorders. You could not smell, you could not taste the food. Now the Lord is healing you of that. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords. And somebody is being healed of, of sore throat. Soreness of your throat is being healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Hosanna to your Lord. And the Lord is cleansing also uh, lungs, you know, like asthma and allergies being healed in Jesus' name. Breathe in Jesus. Breathe out those Asthma and allergy, Lord, open their, the, the alveoli in their lungs in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And also, um, the Lord is healing somebody who has a problem in the stomach area. In Jesus' name, ulcer, 
also is being healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And healing of relationships. You know, um, uh, this uh, this uh, husband and wife that is always bickering, always like in the birds of divorce, but the Lord is touching your hearts right now, and uh, you'll be able to forgive your spouse. The Lord is giving you the grace to forgive and accept your spouse, to forgive and accept your spouse and to love your spouse more than ever before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for healing your people. And Steph and Neck, Steph Neck is being healed. Somebody has Steph Neck. And the Steph Neck is now, is, you, you can move your neck freely in Jesus' name. Freely right now, without any pain. And also frozen sh shoulders. The Lord is healing people with frozen sh shoulders. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Hosanna to your holy name. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hambaria si kalaramba. Hambaria si andio. Praise your holy name. And also, also societal tendencies. Somebody has societal tendencies. You know, the Lord is healing you of that. You know, um, there are many times, they're like at least twice you attempt to take your own life into your own hands. And the Lord is, is speaking into your heart. And the Lord is saying to you, my, my son or my daughter, you are precious in my eyes. You are precious in my eyes. And I want you, I want you to come to me. Give me all your, your problems. Give me all your depression. Give me all your, your entire being. And I'm going to mold you into somebody that that is after my own heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And there are great things that the Lord is preparing for you. So do not waste it by taking your own life. The Lord has great plans for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Hosanna to your Lord. And there and the healing of relationships between a mother and a son. And between a mother and a daughter, healing of relationships. You know, you, you, um, you will. The mother will hear from your daughter, or the mother will heal from your son uh, soon. Without, um, you know, it's he or she will just call you or write you a letter. You know, and uh, there will be there's a healing of relationship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. And someone is thinking about uh, getting a job in another state, and you are hesitant whether or not to take this job. And, and the Lord is saying, I'm blessing you. Go ahead, because I have plans for you. I have plans for you to go, to that, to, to go in that state, because good things are waiting for you there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, so yes. Do not be afraid. You know, just call on the Lord and he will help you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And someone is being healed also of um, um, pain and around your knee. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is healing you of that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And also pain around your elbow. Uh, your pain around your elbow. The Lord is healing you of that. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Trisha, do you have any word dress? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I pray for everybody facing seemingly impossible situations, God. Like when Jairus' daughter died, Jesus, and you resurrected her, but you told him, do not be afraid, just believe. And he said, Help my unbelief. I thank you, Jesus, that you don't scorn us for those moments that we have doubt, for those moments when it seems impossible to us and we can't see how it's going to work out. But you know how it's going to work out. And I ask that you give your people 
faith that believes that you can do the impossible, Jesus, that only by your power and your might, you can do the impossible through us, Jesus, and nothing is impossible for you. And I pray that you give us the faith that holds on to that promises, that keeps on believing even in seemingly impossible situations, Jesus, that you are sovereign, that you come through for us, that you are mighty to save. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. So, Karen, you know, uh, there are many more healings that are taking place. And as I said, they will find out their healings when they go see their doctors. This is like somebody has pain around the jaw. And, um, and you know, sometimes, um, you know, when you open your mouth, you have that pain. And the Lord is healing you of that. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Lord. And Thank gonna... you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to ask you if you could pray over the people to release, to release and open up and 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 trigger the gifts that they already have inside of themselves, so that more people could believe, and uh, more people will born in be born into spiritual life with conversion. Okay. Okay. By the way, um, um, we have um, uh. Karen, yesterday during our our uh, meeting through Zoom prayer meeting, we we prayed for aborted babies from uh, since the beginning of time, you know. And then um, uh, there was this guy. His name is Joseph Charbonneau from Edmonton. He shared uh, because his wife recently died, and um, his wife uh, appeared to him in a dream, you know, and. And um, he saw also the um, Joe also saw many of uh, uh, babies that have been aborted. They are in heaven, that, but they don't have any name. So we decided to to adopt to adopt those children, you know. And so we decided to to pray every day and to ask the Lord to reveal to us the names of those babies um, that have been aborted or miscarried or not being born, you know. So we have, every day we prayed, and as soon as we asked the Lord for their names, so we just, we have a, a paper and pen handy. We, we wrote them down, the names, you know, we'll write them down, you know. And also, we baptized by faith uh, as, uh, as followers and believers of Jesus. We baptized them in the Spirit, because uh, they are those babies that have been, aborted or miscarried or not being born and uh, for sure they're in, you know we, they were in limbo they were in limbo and so we have to to baptize them in the spirit in the name of the father son the holy spirit and many many of those of those aborted and miscarried babies have now been welcomed by the lord into his heavenly abode so um so we, um, I, I believe through, you know, many people, many priests maybe have done the same thing to baptize those babies, you know. So by, by faith in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. And so we are adapting those babies. You know, many of us, many of us in the Zoom meeting are adapting those uh, babies in heaven. Praise God. So, so we, you know, by, by faith, we pray under the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we pray by faith that uh, as our authority, as your followers, as your believers, as a believer of Jesus, by faith, uh, we baptize those babies that have been aborted today, this very day, um, that have been aborted or miscarried or not being born. And Lord, by faith, we baptize them. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we also pray that um, those people who are tuning in to this podcast, oh Lord, and we ask that you, you stir up the gifts that you have given them. And Lord, I ask that the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, the 
the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, uh, healings, miracles, uh, prophecy, uh, tongues, interpretation of tongues in Jesus, discernment of spirits, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit will be upon them, O oh Lord, that stir up this, the flames that you have given us, stir up these gifts within them. And Lord, give me more gifts than what you have given me, Lord, for your greater glory and honor, so that many souls will be saved in your name, that many souls will come into you, Lord, to, uh, Lord, many souls will, will bend down before you and will proclaim that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, Lord, pour out these gifts upon your people who are listening in this podcast. Pour out upon them. Give them more gifts than what you had given me for your greater glory and honor. Oh, Lord, because you said, Lord, as you ask, it will be given unto you. Ask in my name. Lord, you said that to us. Ask in my name, and I will give it to you. So in your name, we ask you, Lord, to pour out these gifts so that your people will be equipped to do your works in your name. In Jesus' name, Lord, continue to activate signs and wonders and miracles into their lives so that, Lord, your name will be glorified, O Lord, so that this world will never be the same again. Lord, that this world will be turned upside down and inside out as your apostles did by proclaiming your name, by proclaiming the gospel, the gospel, by proclaiming your words, Lord. And Lord, we believe that nothing is impossible for you. We come to you, Lord. We come to you with faith. We come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts because, Lord, without you, we are nothing. But with, with you, Lord, we, are, we, we can do anything, as you have said, Lord, that you can do, we can do the works that you did, O oh Lord. And we claim your words because your words are spirit and they, they are life. Praise your holy name. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do in your name. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Karen, thank you. Thank you for, for inviting us again to this podcast. You know, I, I believe that the Lord is doing uh, miracles through us, through you, through, through this ministry of yours, John Lips Evangelization. And by the way, by the way, I have written, for those of you who have not uh, heard about the book that I wrote, I have. I wrote this book, Miracles Never Ending, and and it, this is available through uh, Amazon.com. You know, I, I highly recommend this book uh, because they are uh, books that um, uh, you can read and you can apply in your lives. You know, how uh, no, God is pouring out his miraculous graces upon his people. Find out how you can effectively pray and receive your miracles, how you can receive your miracles. So it's in this book, okay? And then miracles I Miracles Never and, Ending. Miracles Never Ending. Amazon.com. Amazon.com. Amazon. Amazon. And also I have, uh, I wrote another book. Book is called Awesome Power from on high about the power that the Lord is giving us. You know, uh, learn how to receive the awesome power of God and how to use it in your everyday life. You know, how to use um, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, how to use healings and miracles and, and prophecy and discerning, sending of spirits, how to receive and use tongues and interpretation of tongues and discernment of spirits. These are the tools that the Lord um, has given us. So one by one, these gifts, this, the, all of the gifts are being explained in this book, how to receive the gifts, how to be open to the gifts. And we have teachings from the church about these gifts, uh, teachings from the fathers of the church. We have testimonies, you know, how to receive these gifts, how these gifts operate. So it's in, 
um, uh, if you want to order this gift, this book, you know, uh, it's not yet on uh, Amazon, but it, but we are, we are at, I think in, in few weeks, this will be available. But if you want to order this book, you can send me your, an email. And, and I think it's being projected. My email address is being projected there, Karen. Uh, RC Canton at yes, sbcglobal.net. Yeah, yes. you can send me an email. RCC me Canton, RCC Canton at SCB Global. At SBC, 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 S as in Sam, B as in Bravo, and C as in Charlie. Oops. Okay, sorry, I got that wrong. SBC, it's not SCB. Global. SB. No, SBC Global.net. Global. Sorry about that. Net. Yeah. Yeah, okay. send me an email and your address, and the, the book costs uh, fifteen dollars, fifteen dollars each. Okay, so uh, this um, Amazon is fifteen ninety five, and the same thing with the book fifteen ninety five. You know, send me an email if you want to get this book. Amen. Amen. And then the miracles never ending. You can order this, as I said, from Amazon.com. Okay. Praise God. Thank, Thank you. you again, Karen. Thank you. And God bless you, Brother Bob, for your ministry. Thank you for endlessly helping people. And um, you also have um, you also have uh, a Zoom that you un invite people to. Yes, every Saturday at 2 p.m. <laughs> California time. 2 p.m. California time. But Karen, we have people from the Philippines, people from... from um, from France, people from Malaysia, people from um, uh, California, of course, people from Canada, people from New York, from all over the place, you know, joining. So they are welcome to join to our to our uh, Zoom uh, prayer meeting every Saturday at 2 p.m. California time. So that's 5 p.m. Uh, New York time. And... Um, and I think um, uh, in in the Philippines is 5 a.m. Sunday morning, you know, 5 a.m. Sunday morning. The same thing in in Thailand and and Malaysia, Indonesia, you know. So and so and, they um, only have to connect with you through your web, your email, rccanton at sbcglobal.net. Yeah, if you want me to send them an invitation. They have to send me a, an email, and um, I will send them an invitation to join in. And we have people being healed in that uh, Zoom prayer meeting because we have praise and worship. We have teaching also. We have testimonies. We also pray for healing, as, as we do in this podcast, uh, Karen. And, and this podcast will be live on um, YouTube, right? Yes. Bob, somebody said that they they got a healing. Really? It says here, thank uh, CPK. <laughs> praise God. Thank you for healing my finger, which has been suffering from arthritis. I've been in pain so bad. Thank you for praying for us, Brother Bob. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, you for Lord. receiving the healing, and we praise Jesus because He's the healer. Amen. I I can only pray for healing, and I also speak out uh, uh, the healings that the Lord is prompting me to receive. And, and I believe that many more healings are taking place. All you have to do is to go to the doctors to, um, to verify the healings, like uh, healing of heart, healing of lungs, you know, asthma and allergy, and um, COPD, and, and um, yeah, the uh, frozen fingers. Thank you, Lord, being healed in Jesus' name. Frozen Frozen soldiers, soldier, shoulders, <laughs> in Jesus' name, being healed. And Thank I, you, Lord. I believe people yeah. with depression are being healed. And yes, also amen. Addiction. Anxiety. Addiction. Panic attack also. People with panic attack, Karen. Amen. There are people with panic attacks. They are being healed. You know, they, they know that they're the one because they are, they're feeling like kind of a warmness on, on, their, on, on top of their head. And they are being healed of panic attacks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. 
People heal to cancer even, Karen. Pray, pray People pray. heal to cancer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Thank it you, says Lord. here, tell Brother Bob it's Chris from Elk Grove. Chris from Elk oh, Grove. Oh, Chris. Chris Kusuma from Elk Grove. Praise God. Chris Kusuma. Yeah, that's Elk Grove is uh, only about half an hour drive from us. And and this lady, her name is Chris Kuzuma. She's a very good friend of mine. You know, she's being healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. And I shared this before, and I'm still going to write a testimony that I was healed when you prayed over me. I'd been bleeding almost a month. And uh, when you prayed over me after the, the live stream, it ceased. I stopped bleeding completely. And I was getting weak already. Uh, very, very weak and numbness all over. So praise God. You know, uh, Karen, I'm still waiting for your written testimony. It's coming. Okay. Yes. It's coming this thank week. You, Lord. Yeah. And I'd like to thank Tricia for her willingness to give a testimony. There are more, you know, Tricia, praise God. That I thank the Lord that that seeing being she's being used by the Lord more and more. Amazing. Trisha is an amazing speaker. God bless her. Thank you. Only by the grace of God, because I had to have speech therapy. So for oh somebody gosh. To speech therapy to be able to speak, it's only by the grace of God. But but the thing is, she didn't she didn't really need a speech therapy therapist. You know, she doesn't really need the speech therapist and and uh, speech therapist only only he says, oh, you're able to speak. You're able. You don't need me. Right, Tress? <laughs> so it's amazing how the Lord, how the Lord does his miracle, especially on Trisha. Can you imagine? Um, and, you know, she, she bet all the, she beat all the odds against her, you know. Uh, one time the doctor the doctor says we have to install this in her stomach uh, so that so that she can eat and then last minute they change their minds no no we don't need that she doesn't need that after all you know and uh, uh, what's the thing that they have to try to install in your in your stomach dress because they thought that you could not uh, swallow food <laughs> and I then the last thing huh? you. I had a feeding tube when I was in the coma, but when I woke up from the coma, I actually ended up pulling the feeding tube out myself. And then they said, okay, let's, let's check to see if she can eat. And I was able to eat. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah, that's my food. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> I was, I was, you know what, Karen, I remember that day. Because I, 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 we stayed in the hotel just right across uh, uh, the UC Irvine Medical Center and in, in uh, Irvine. Uh, no, actually, what's that? Oak, Oak Grove? No, not Oak, Oak Grove. Somewhere there. So anyway, we stayed in the hotel. And at 5 a.m. in the morning, my wife my wife called me. She said, she, she was crying. She says, you know what? Tricia pulled, <laughs> pulled her feeding tube. And... Um, and oh. and the doctors were were uh, really really in panic, you know. And but then they didn't put it back. But she was able to chew chew on on food. She was able to to eat her food without that, you know. So it's a miracle. Praise God. She's a so, living testimony of God's complete resurrection. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. So and I can't they, wait they to were, hear the miracles to come. Yes, and they were, they were, they were twice or like she was ready, like all the doctors were ready to install something in in her body, and and uh, they um, they were in the rooms, uh, ready to bring her down to the to the uh, to the room to install something in her body, but last minute they changed their minds. You know, there was twice or three times that happened to her. It's amazing. The Lord is really looking after her. I mean, the hands of God are upon her. It's just so amazing. You know, I like to write a book about her. I think I think I say, well, Tricia, you have to write a book one of these days about what happened to you. I think many people will buy that book because Amen. it's a miraculous book. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. So, Brother Bob, bring I, Trisha I next time. Take, take <laughs> huh? What, what, Tris? I'm just going to take it day by day and be obedient to God in what ways he wants me to serve. Amen. Amen. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It really, she built up my faith, Karen. Trisha builds up our faith. It's so you know? beautiful. So, Brother Bob, please bring her again. Trisha, I hope you come again next time. I will be glad to. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Thank you. So, Praise God. Thank you, Brother Bob. Thank you, Trisha. God bless you. Thank you, Karen. Okay. God bless you. And, I'll call and, you. And uh, we'll talk to you later, okay? Okay. Okay. God bless. God bless. Bye -bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Everybody, we know the answers there. Love is the only thing that's going to heal this world, this big mess that we have. Love is God, and He will bring it onto us because He wants us healed. We just need to get workers in the vineyard to spread this love around. And so that's you, people. That's all of us. We need to really fire up ourselves with the Lord, and the Lord will give it to us. And then you'll see miracles happening. So if you want to get the book, it's The Love Club. It's in Amazon, in uh, digital format, or paperback. God bless you all, and thank you for joining us today. God bless you.